Who cuts up the brand new headers, huh? I'll tell you who. So we had this 1987 Ram Charger at my friend Holly's shop for the last month, but today we're bringing it back to my shop and we're gonna do some things to it. Let's get it rolled up and we'll get started. So one of my favorite tools in the shop is broken right now and I'm waiting for parts for it and that tool is my plasma table and just about everything I need to do on this requires cutting or some kind of fabrication on that end. And I don't have a regular plasma cutter here, so I can't cut them out by hand unless I use like a grinder with a cutoff wheel. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna wait for the part. So the first thing that we're actually gonna get started on that doesn't need fabrication is engine work. So right now it has a stock Mopar 360 in it. I believe it's the last carbureted 360 before they went to fuel injection on these. We're gonna be pulling all that off and actually putting fuel injection in. I've got plans for a cam, an intake, possibly heads. I don't think there's any more room in the budget to do heads, but we're definitely gonna to wanna to do the cam. Let's get into it. So I took the front tires off the Ram Charger and I lowered this thing all the way to the ground just so I could work on it easier. Before I tear all of the parts out of it, probably wondering, well, where are the parts that you're gonna be putting into it? Well, the answer to that is outside. I got them already, but we're gonna pretend like I don't have them and we're gonna go get them right now. So basically this motor is an old derby motor that my dad used to run. Mm -hmm. I think he only had two runs on it. It was new for that uh, truck we ran in West Jordan, the last junkie truck. Yeah, so like five years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it ran in that T-Bird. Transmission don't have reverse. Um, Got a cam in it. I think it's a comp or comp extreme or comp energy or something like that. Yeah, with a matched intake. Yeah, with the Edelbrock RPM intake. And don't quote me on this, but I swear it may or may not have had some head work done. I know your dad did a lot of stuff to it. Him and Rowdy's put together all at the end. So. Okay. It's got an HEI in it for small block Chryslers. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, it's got a nut that I dropped down the intake, so don't start it without tearing it apart. Yeah, sure. We're good. Cool. Just leave it for my please. So fifteen dollars. We'll go fifty percent on it. Fifteen dollars. I'll tell you what. We'll go higher for holding it for me. Here's $20. That's too much. Nope. 20 bucks. It's got things wrong with it. A lot of things wrong with it. A lot of things wrong with it. <laughs> it pretty much is only scrap value, except for the things that I need off of it. Yeah. All right, now that we have that old derby motor here, we need to go get it so that we can start taking the parts off of it. You can. Nut fell down. Valve cover. Needs head gaskets. Word for the wise. And no, it has no reverse either. So, the perfect parts motor. I, I just really appreciate the foot right there. That's the gas pedal. I just appreciate it. Uh huh. Okay. See how balanced I got it. Guess it's time to tear into it. Like I said before, we're going for the intake manifold, we're going for the camshaft, we're gonna pull the lifters for the cam as well. And yeah, other than that, I think everything else is kind of junk in it. There is a nut that fell down the intake but when they were pulling it out of the derby car. So we'll keep an eye out for that, see where that ended up. So this cam in here is already broken along with the lifters. So when we put it all back together in the Ram Charger, 
We want to make sure that the lifters are on the same lobes. When I pull it out, you'll see what I mean and how, how that all works. We gotta get the front of this thing pulled off so that we can actually slide the cam out. I wish I knew what I was doing. Never worked on V8s before. So before I pull these lifters out, I really want to make sure that I know where I'm pulling them from. There should be 16 of them. Doesn't really matter how you mark them, just as long as they go back in the same way. So yeah, one at a time. Now I'll put them carefully in their own bin. Nice. We'll put that in a safe location where we'll be putting them back in that thing. I just pulled this gorgeous camshaft out and uh, looked up the lift duration and whatnot. It's a little bit more aggressive than I thought. With using this camshaft, they re actually recommend that I change the valve springs as well. So I gotta pull all those off. I would just swap the heads because it's so much easier, but I was informed that one of the heads is cracked. So that's no bueno. It's getting dark, so I'll be back in the morning to finish pulling these valve springs off, and then we can put all that good stuff onto our other engine. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, so good morning. Yesterday we pulled the cam out of that derby motor, and today we're gonna be putting it in here. But we gotta strip this motor down now to put it in. Upon tearing this thing apart, I have discovered some things. First thing, uh, one of the heater hoses was leaking into the intake manifold right here. It was just leaking water out, which was not a good thing. And then the distributor like clamp to hold it down from twisting was really loose. I'm surprised it didn't spin while we were off-roading with it. I got a lot of the accessories pulled off and other things unbolted. So we can pull the valve covers and the intake manifold and then we can start tearing into the front to get that stock camshaft out. Wow, it looks really clean under there. That's awesome. While we pull this thing apart, just want to make sure that like everything stays clean. Like we don't want dirt falling in there because that would seriously compromise this whole operation. Well, this side looks really good too. I think these were pulled off and cleaned not too long ago. Well, I got to pull this off. You'll see. Um, pull the distributor. Perfect. Flawless. That's a pretty new distributor. Okay. Now the fun part. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm not I'm not exaggerating. Like this one, super light, like super light. This one, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that one sucks to pick up. So everything we pulled off that derby motor, we need to pull off of this. So that means we gotta pull the lifters, we've gotta pull the valve springs, we gotta pull the rockers.
This is tedious. I don't know if there's a faster way to do this or what, but I've never had an activity so painstakingly slow. The intake ones are the hard ones. The exhaust ones are fine. This did not last long. I've only removed 20 springs with this and it's already broken. This is the tool everyone recommended to. To begin with, I never could twist it with my fingers, like not even close. Well, I guess we're done for the night. Cause I mean, this doesn't work. I'm not very happy with this tool. I think I could make one better. So when I went home last night after being disappointed by the functionality of that tool, I was looking at designs for other valve spring compressors and I think I found a design I like and it does both of them at once. It does two, the intake and exhaust valve springs at the same time. So I'm gonna get to work on it and we'll see what I come up with. All right, so this is the first piece we ended up making and it actually sits over, over the two of them like that because I need to be able to access these keepers in there. But I also need to be able to push that down. I have this piece and when I bolt it in and it pushes them down. But there's one more trick I have to do to keep the valves from actually falling down into the cylinder. And that's what I have this rope for. Now this isn't something I figured out. This is a trick that's been known for a while. I'm pretty sure it's in some of the service manuals for these old V8s. But what you do is you take the spark plug out of the spark plug hole on the side and you just shove this rope in that hole. And then you have to bring that piston up so that the rope stuffed in there is pushing it tightly against the valves so that you can get the keepers out and so the valves don't fall into the cylinder. Stuff this rope in, just like that. There you go. Now we got that rope shoved in there and the piston shoved all the way to the top. When I tighten this down, you see the valves stay in their spot. Then watch this, just take one keeper off Another keeper off. One keeper off. Other keeper off. Flashback to last night when you were struggling. struggling. Holy cow, yeah. This one I'm not even using power tools and it's like 50 times faster. And then we'll just, we have to loosen it up to get the springs off. Okay, so this is the difference. Let me show you these. So on one hand, you have the old spring, pretty soft. I can actually compress it a little bit with my fingers. I don't know if you can see that. This is what we're upgrading to. This one's got another coil in it for one, and then the actual coils on the outside are heavier. And why do we need to be replacing these? Well, when you change the camshaft, sometimes the duration changes of the valves when they open and close, and you have to have a stronger valve spring to keep things working properly, essentially. So, since that motor already had them, we'll just put these in. They're almost brand new though, so I'm not worried about it. Before they go in though, just wanna make sure that I clean them up good. We don't want any dirt in this engine. I've been spending a lot of time making sure everything is just super clean. And I know the nature of it is dirty, but I can't have any dirt on these. They can be greasy, they can be oily. They just can't be gritty. Well. Moral of the story and make your own tools, I guess. I guess. This tool cut the time from like, I want to say like 30 minutes 
down to less than five. I'm impressed. There you have it. It's gonna need to be cleaned up pretty good. So, I'm fairly confident that these didn't come with a roller chain from the factory. I think this was put on, and I don't think it was put on too long ago. But if you look over here at this one, single tooth style, and then the chain is just links. If you look at this one, double tooth style with roller chain, double doubled up. This is engine assembly lube. We want it on everything. Every moving surface when we put a new um, parts in, or after you take something apart, should probably have this on it. Because when you first start it up, since you took the engine apart and presumably wiped all the oil off of everything, it's gonna take a second for all the oil to get where it's supposed to. And that stuff is supposed to fill that roll until the oil actually comes back. So I went and I put the timing chain back on, timing chain cover, water pump, um, got my rockers bolted on to the heads and all the new lifters that match the camshaft put in. And I think we're ready to put the new intake manifold on. The only issue is I need to get it cleaned up. It's filthy. Here it is. Okay, so we have an issue. So with this bracket, this spot right here holds the AC and this coolant port out the top of this intake manifold is in a really bad spot. It's moved over to the center of the intake, whereas on the old one, it is moved off to the side. So that means when we put this bracket up, just like that, and then we bring the AC condenser up, it is in the way. So. We need to modify this bracket to work, and I think I'm just gonna cut it and slide it over about an inch and a half, maybe a little more, and it should clear. Still should be able to clear the valve covers, which I haven't put on yet. They are painted and drying. So yeah, we'll get to it. I got the bracket tacked together um, and it just kind of in place. Only issue is under there, right under there, it's touching. So I think this bracket needs to go up just a little bit. It looks really good. Where have you been all day? Work and I took a nap. It's been a good day. Can't see the sparkle though. Well. Knocked it off, added about an inch strip, bolted it up, see if it works. Fingers crossed. Assuming the hood closes, that's exactly where I want this thing. So we have some new long tube headers for this engine. The old ones are cast and they're cracked and they're disgusting. Let me show you. They weigh a ton as well and they're just 
all around, not great. But <coughs> these should also help us with a, a few horsepowers, like probably like four or five massive gains. Anyway, only issue I can see is I don't think they quite fit. Yeah, these are gonna be a real pain in the butt to get in, but we have to do it, have to. To get those to go in, I think we're gonna have to pull the motor mounts or just unbolt them so that we can lift this thing just straight up. Going in, probably for the last time in its entire life. It's like perfectly in the way. Can you put it like through here at all? It doesn't move. So let me let me let me backtrack a little bit. These are the second pair I've ordered. The first ones I ordered said they were for this motor, but they were actually for a small block Chevy. This is a small block Mopar, and I read a lot of reviews that said, "Oh yeah, this worked on my Ram Charger. This worked on my D150. All this stuff." And uh, there, it's it's definitely not. Definitely not. All right. So it wasn't right before. Hopefully this makes it right. So I've got it clamped to the table here. I'm pretty confident in the way it's set up right now that when I go get the torch and heat up these spots over here, that I'll be able to bend that in. Guess we'll do what we have to. Cut them and weld them. Ha <laughs> Okay. Now we're talking. Who cuts up their brand new headers, huh? I'll tell you who. This guy. This guy. This is how it was. Okay, this is how I need it, right there. Not much. That's why we were trying to bend it with a torch earlier. So I need to start at zero, go to big. We'll see if that was enough. Do you think we got it on the first try? After cutting a brand new one apart? It's an awful lot closer. Just so you're aware, the goal is for this link to miss it. It looks like I need to go a little more. Just getting ready to weld it all back together because it fits now. So I'll probably get a piece of sheet metal to like put a collar over it so that it uh, is stronger and less likely to crack later on down the road because I definitely don't want to be re-welding these. I wouldn't even go as far as saying these are custom headers because I'm not proud of these. I know my exhaust work isn't great, but a couple of you guys shaking your head. Yeah. Cool, we'll weld together. That definitely clears now. All that work, that blasted stupid work. Okay. Okay. Ready to bolt this on. Okay. The manifold gasket we're gonna use. And just like that. So on these heads, there's like an emissions thing for the exhaust. 
it feeds back into the intake and whatnot. And te it technically recycles the exhaust and puts it into the intake. Makes the engine run poorer, but makes the emissions less. This has those ports in the head. This one does not. You can see here. There's a, there should be a hole there, but there isn't. Whereas on this one, there is down here. You can see that. I was hoping that the exhaust would cover those holes so that they wouldn't be a problem because it's as if the exhaust is just wide open. You can also see the holes in this gasket here, but they don't cover them. So it's effectively having an open valve. So we're just gonna weld those holes up and then we'll be able to install that header and uh, be good to go on that side. And then we gotta figure out the nightmare of the driver's side. This is taking way longer than I thought. I'm just gonna be welding up all these little emission ports. Yeah, they're, they're plugged, so that's all that matters. Now, if we can put this on. <laughs> My dipstick isn't even touching the header anymore. Nice, that makes me so happy. So even though cutting apart these long tube headers isn't ideal, it ended up being okay in the end. All right, so last night we got this passenger side header modified and put in, and believe it or not, the driver's side actually fit in just fine. I'm waiting for the parts store to get me a smaller starter because now that that header's in, my big fat starter uh, won't fit in anymore. So believe it or not, any of the more modern Mopar engines that were based off of this V8 or V6 use the same starter, but they're half this size. So I don't have any laying around, but uh, that's just a little tip for those of you trying to fit these. So we'll get that replaced tomorrow, but everything clears. We got all the accessories bolted back on, AC uh, compressor on, alternator, water pump. Yeah, it's all there. I'm pretty excited for the next video. We'll probably end up starting this next time. We're building this Ram Charger to compete in Onyx Off-Road's build challenge to go to Ultimate Adventure. And ultimately, we need your votes to help us win. So you can go vote using the link in the description. If you want to make an Onyx account, you can use the promo code Rudy and it'll get you 20% off. Thanks for your help. <laughs> yeah.